Welcome to the third video in CID series on emergency preparedness for individuals with disabilities. The Center for Independence of Individuals with Disabilities, CID, is a nonprofit agency run by and for people with disabilities. CID's mission is to provide support services, community awareness, and system change advocacy to promote full and equal community integration and participation for people with disabilities. We serve San Mateo County, but we are one of 28 centers for independent living around California. As a center run by and for people with disabilities, we are experienced in supporting ourselves and our consumers to be prepared in case of emergencies. Many of us have experienced these types of emergencies ourselves, from wildfires to public safety power shutoffs to the current pandemic. That's why CID created this video series called Emergency Preparedness for People with Disabilities. This is the third of a series of seven videos where we will be addressing some of the most commonly raised questions and concerns around emergency preparedness for people with disabilities. In this video, we'll focus on your emergency kit. What should we consider when building an emergency kit? Communication. How will you reach out to your support network or to first responders? Keep in mind that the most conventional communication methods like cell phones might be limited during a disaster. First aid supplies and medication. On top of band-aids, dressing, burn cream, and such, it is important to also include any medication and other medical supplies that you use to keep healthy in your kit. Living necessities. Consider your living necessities, like food and water. Experts recommend to have a supply that will last at least 72 hours in up to seven days. Tools and backup items. These are tools and devices you will need to address self-care and to perform basic maintenance or repair to your durable medical equipment. Having a small toolkit, spare parts, and even duct tape are recommended. What to include in your kit. Here's a sample list of what to include in your emergency kit. CID has starter emergency backpacks that contain most of these items available to older adults and individuals with disabilities who live in San Mateo County at no cost. To apply for these kits, please click on the link in the video description. Water and food, IDs and information, medication, first aid and personal protective equipment, protection from the environment, and technology and communication. Water and food. When considering your water supply, plan to allocate one gallon of drinking water per person per day. Prepare for at least two weeks supply for situations when you are sheltering in place. Water can be stored in a cool, dry place for up to five years. Plan to have a water bottle or reusable bottle in your emergency kit. Note the situation when you are evacuating, you will only need supplies to sustain you until you reach a shelter or assembly area. Food. Prepare your food for supply for up to two weeks. Non-perishable food that you can eat without heating to account for the instances where power may be out and you may not have the ability to heat or cook food. When using canned food, Inspect the can for swelling or deformations. Smell and check the food before eating. If in doubt of the freshness of the food, do not eat it. Also remember to have accessible utensils and tools to open your food supply. Identification and other critical information. During an emergency, it is important to have all your necessary identification and copies of personal documents ready and packed in your emergency kit. Here's a list of the recommended items to have in your kit. A copy of your insurance card, your ID or passport, a list of the medications you are taking, a letter or document to present to the medical providers about your individual's needs for accommodating your disability, a list of emergency contacts, and any other medical documents you may consider. CID recommends using a medical passport which contains all the necessary medical information that you can present to the first responders or medical providers that includes all the critical information they will need to ensure that they provide you with the medical care that you need. To learn more about the medical passports, 
please click on the link in the video description. Medication. When planning for your emergency medical supply, there are three things to consider. First is to check for its shelf life. All medications have an amount of time when they are effective. Please consult your medical provider for your medication's shelf life and ensure that you are replacing the expired medication in your emergency kit. Next, it is important to consider whether your medication will need to be refrigerated. If so, you'll need to consider a means of ensuring your medication is stored in the appropriate temperature in the event that the power is cut off at your home. CID has tested two types of coolers that can be effective. The links will be posted in the video description. Lastly, it is imperative to consider how much medication you will need. It is important to have a conversation with your medical provider on your plan to have an emergency supply as most prescriptions are allocated specifically for day-to-day -day use. Experts recommend having a three-day and up to two-week supply ready. First aid, personal protective equipment, and self-care. A well-stocked first aid kit is very handy to have during an emergency. They come in many shapes and sizes, and it is important that your kit is built for your individual needs. The American Red Cross has guidelines and recommendations for first aid kits for various applications. We recommend that you visit their website before you consider building or purchasing your kit. The link will be posted in the video description. Personal Protective Equipment, or PPE, has become commonplace during the pandemic. It is effective against communicable diseases. It is important to have PPE kits as part of your emergency kit. We recommend having one box of disposable gloves, one box of face masks, preferably N95, but homemade cloth masks can be a good alternative, hand sanitizer, and disinfectant wipes. Also keep a supply of self-care items. Soap, a washcloth, towel, or chamois can be handy to keep clean. Protection from the environment. Clothing. During a disaster, it's important to account for the worst case scenario. In this instance, be prepared for instances where there is no heating or cooling or whether you will be exposed to the elements is key. Your geographical location will play a key factor in the type of clothing you will pack in your emergency kit. In general, we recommend that you pack two changes of clean clothing, layer your clothes to prevent overheating, utilize packable clothing that can be hand washed and hang dried, use heavy duty shoes or boots, thick gardening or leather gloves, have a jacket, preferably a packable one or and rain poncho. Protections from the environment, weather. If your area is mostly in hot weather, or if you need to stay cool, plan to have light breathable clothing with sun protection. Pack a hat that will protect your head and neck from the sun. CID has tested the chill pad cooling towel that can be handy in warm weather. The link will be posted in the video description. Always remember to pack sunblock. If your area is mostly cold weather and if you need to stay warm, bring a good lightweight packable jacket and packable solar mylar blankets. CID has tested the roar weighted blanket and hot hands heat packets that can be used to keep warm in cold weather. The links to those reviews will be posted in the video description. Protections from the environment, DIY or do it yourself. In the event the weather changes or if you do not have clothing to protect you for, from the weather, there are everyday items that you can use to supplement the clothes that you are wearing to protect you from the weather. CID has tested these and found them to be effective. To stay warm in cold weather, use a plastic garbage bag. While it's not breathable, it can keep your body's heat from escaping. Cutting a hole in the bottom of the garbage bag for your head to pass through and drape the bag over your body like a poncho. <clears throat> you can use paper, newspapers, magazines, etc. to add layers to your clothing. Tuck them under your outermost layer of clothing. The extra layers will serve as insulation from the cold. To stay cool in hot weather, use a washcloth or chamois. Soak it in cool water and place it around your neck. As the water evaporates, it'll help with cooling your body down. Repeat the process when the towel dries. 
technology and communication needs. Here are some recommended items to add to your emergency kit that help address your technology and communication needs during an emergency. A conventional rechargeable flashlight is one of the top items to store in your emergency kit. There are many to choose from, but it is important that you pick one that suits your needs and abilities. Cell phone chargers and power adapter cords are essential. In the event of a power shutoff, it is important to have a backup power bank. CID has tested the Luminade solar powered lantern slash charger that accomplishes these functions. The review will be posted in the video description. A portable AM FM radio is a good device to have to ensure that you are receiving current updates. Hand crank radios can be purchased to eliminate the need for batteries. It is important to have a backup power supply for your durable medical devices and other assistive technology. Make sure you have the various adapters and cords to ensure that you can keep these devices charged. In some instances, it's good to have non-electrical backups. For example, having a picture board is a backup to an AAC machine or an augmented alternative communication device. Emergency Kit Maintenance Once you've prepared your emergency kit, it is important to ensure that it is well maintained. Your kit must be stored in a cool, dry, and accessible location. Building a regular routine to maintain, inspect, and replace items that expire. If you have a rechargeable power bank in your kit, make sure to check the charge monthly and recharge when necessary. On the left of the screen is a picture of the emergency kits you can receive from CID. Please check out the links in the video description to apply for a starter emergency kit. We hope this video is helpful and answered some of your questions around emergency preparedness for people with disabilities. We know that everyone's experience is unique and one video cannot answer all questions. Please click and check out the other videos in this series. If you need any support with emergency preparedness, please visit our website at www.cidsanmateo.org backslash CID prepared or give us a call at 650-645-1780. We have resources including a virtual individualized emergency planning tool, as well as starter emergency kits available at no cost to residents of San Mateo County for individuals with disabilities and or older adults. Our team is here to answer your questions and provide support. Thank you.